Today we're going to talk about wireless systems. Um, we use the Sure ULX in this class. Um, so what I want to do is give you an overview of wireless in general um, and then talk about the specific instruments that we have up here to discuss. So the, the first thing to bring up about wireless is really, um, you know, when it comes to the difference between hardwire and wireless, Hardwire is going to have the best audio quality. Of course, wireless uses what's called a compander circuit, which is going to compress your signal and expand it on the other side. In the world of wireless, you got to remember that you have a transmitter and a receiver. So if you're talking about a microphone, the handheld microphone is the transmitter, while the receiver would be the base station that could be located anywhere within range of that microphone. Um, now, if you're talking wireless in-ears, that is different, right? Because now you would have a transmitter that would be probably next to monitor world, and then an antenna that would be focusing that, that uh, signal to a position on stage, and the pack that the person would be wearing is the receiver. So I'm going to be using those terms a lot, transmitter and receiver. Just understand that it's bi-directional depending on which type of system you're actually discussing. discussing. So the first thing to bring up is the uh, transmitters themselves. So the transmitter, as an example, um, this is a, a handheld wireless 58. Um, you know, you've got two things that you really need to worry about. You need to worry about battery life, and you can see that the battery is actually living inside of the transmitter. Um, and the other thing that you have to worry about would be referred to as RF, or radio frequency. The, the thing that you got to remember is that there is so much stuff flying around your head, you would be shocked. And there's only so much bandwidth that we in the entertainment industry are allowed to use. Um, in the old days, most things were in the 700 band. The 700 band was sold. Um, uh, and basically forced everybody to either move lower in frequency or higher in frequency. Um, there was a big deal about that. Um, feel free to read about that information. It's all kind, there's all kinds of information out there. And I'll also bring that information up in lecture when we discuss wireless as well. I'll go into more detail in the lecture. Um, understand that current events have caused what they're referring to as a repack. And T-Mobile has now purchased the 600 megahertz band to start giving their devices 5G information. So now, again, if anybody had moved into the 600 megahertz band, they'll most likely have to move out. And understand that these systems can't just be tuned automatically to multiple bands. They're built to work within frequency ranges. So if something is made illegal in your area, it's not as easy as just moving to another frequency on your device. You typically would actually have to purchase new units to get you into a, 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 a new set of frequencies that are legal and willing to be used. So, um, so some things I just want to explain. Um, on this transmitter itself, there is actually three buttons, um, if you can see that. There is the on-off switch on the button, uh, or which is just a switch. You have a mode button, and you have a set button. So everything within, um, every way that you can adjust this transmitter is all done through the, with the on-off, the mode, and the set. The only other thing that you can change on the microphone itself would be its sensitivity. To get at the sensitivity, open the bottom, and there is a very, very small indention right there where you can use a little uh, tweaker screwdriver to adjust the sensitivity of the microphone up and down. So just something to mention if you, um, if you ever used one of these systems, okay? So with that having been said, now what I would need to do is I would need to um, basically make sure that my microphone and my, uh, which is the transmitter, and my receiver are actually tuned to the same frequency. I, I know because we set this up prior to this video that I've already tuned this, but I'm going to demonstrate how this works as well. The first thing I want to show you very quickly, though, is if I turn on the microphone that's tuned to this receiver, you're now going to see on the left-hand side, the yellow is showing you your strength of wireless signal. The green um, is actually denoting um, antenna, what antenna is being used. And 
to see your audio level, if I talk into it, you can now see the audio level in the green, okay? Now, as you're noticing, if the microphone's extremely close, I have very, very good signal. As the microphone gets further away, that signal is dropping. That is not a good thing. That is something that you definitely wanna watch out for. Um, and the reason that there's such a pronounced drop as the microphone moves away is we purposefully did not put the antennas on there. So if I put an antenna on this receiver, you're instantly going to see that I have a much, much stronger strength of signal, okay? So now, here's something else to mention. Notice that it has ports for two antennas. And what I'll do is I'll turn this around so you can see how these antennas are actually hooked up. Now, not only are there the ports for the antennas themselves, there's also an AUGS output, um, the ability to just mic line, and you can see where the XLR output is on the back, and that's what you would feed either into your uh, stage box, if this is on stage, or this could easily be sitting next to your console and feed XLR directly into the input that you want to use. So now that my system is fully hooked up, I've got both antennas hooked up to this, and I've got great strength of signal, um, let me show you guys how you would actually tune this to a different frequency. So remember, as I mentioned, there is a mode and a set. What you need to do is to change the frequency that you're on, hold mode, and it's gonna show you only the group. So it's not showing you frequency, it's showing you group and channel. Now that I am only on group, I can use the set button to move me through the different groups. So remember I was using group two, then what I would need to do is hit mode again, it jumps to channel, and then I can use the set button again to switch to whatever channel it is that I want to use, okay? So in this case, it was two, six. So I'm gonna go to group two, channel six. So just to explain real quick the whole group and channel thing, what the manufacturer has done is they have found frequencies that play well together and they have grouped them together and formulated them as, denoted them as different groups. So a lot of times if you have a lot of wireless and you find a clean group, what you would want to do is try to have all your wireless in that same group because you know that the channels within that group are going to play well together. Here's the thing that, to bring up very, very quickly. If you bring two transmitters close to each other, what's going to happen is you're gonna get what's referred to as intermod or intermodulation in between those two frequencies. So to make the math very easy, if I have a frequency set at 500, another frequency set at 600, if I bring the two transmitters next to each other, what's gonna happen, I'm gonna get noise at 550, right in between the 500 and 600. So any other wireless that I had put in that range, I would wanna make sure that I avo avoid 550 or I'm going to have all kinds of noise on that problem. So that's one of the things that you have to think about in the world of wireless. Now, one nice feature on these is that, A, I can look and see if there's activity on groups, but also it has a scan feature that once you're in a group, it will automatically skip used frequencies, even if you don't know that those frequencies are there. So what you can see is I have two I have two uh, receivers, both are set to group two, each one is set to a different channel. So to explain very quickly, if I wanted to first look at my groups and see if my groups have activity, notice on the front face of this, it's very similar to the transmitter itself. It's got mode, set, and a wheel, okay? So if I hit mode once, I'm now in channel scan. If I hit mode a second time, I'm now in group. So if I start moving from group to group, what I'm basically looking for is I'm looking for any kind of RF. If any kind of RF shows up, then that would be a group I want to avoid. That means that easily it could be being used somewhere else near you that's transmitting far enough that it's actually interfering with you. So everything looks good here. From, so I'm gonna go ahead um, and change this guy to group two, and I'll hit 
set, then I have the ability to change the channel. Now remember, we were on 2.6 before, and I still have my transmitter on, so you'll see that as soon as I go to 2.6, it's going to lock right into that transmitter, okay? Now let's say I didn't know that 2.11 existed. So then what I would do is I could hit mode once and get myself into the scan feature. So if I scan, you'll see it'll go up to eight, it'll go up to nine, it'll go up to 10. Now remember that 11 is actually already being used over here. Now what I did is I just turned another transmitter on, so now they are actually connected. And you'll see as soon as I try to go to 11, it's automatically gonna skip it and jump to 12. So that's a way to very easily look and make sure that you are not going to interfere with frequencies in another room close to you, or other way around, other, other systems that are in rooms near you aren't going to mess with the frequencies that you tune to. So at that point, I would know I don't wanna use 11, 12 would be clean, so I could hit set, so now what I would need to do is I would need to then on my transmitter, remember the mode and set on the actual transmitter, I hit mode once, it's on two. I would then hit mode again, it's now on six. But now I would need to hit set until I get to 212 and hit mode one more time. It's gonna lock into 212. And now you can see that this microphone is tuned to that transmitter. So, so just a few basic steps on first making sure that you've got clean frequencies to deal with, make sure that you look at your battery life, make sure that you've got plenty of battery life. The last thing you wanna do is send a microphone up on stage with no battery life left. That would be uh, an easy way for you to lose your gig. Now, this is not the only transmitter, okay? There, are, uh, uh, there is another transmitter right here and this is an example of a belt pack. And this belt pack is the same belt pack I'm wearing for the microphone that is on me right now um, so that you can actually hear me in this video. So I've got that belt pack on my back pocket and the microphone is of course hooked to my polo. Now this is a transmitter just like this is a transmitter, okay? Now the nice thing about the belt pack transmitter though is as long as you have the right connection type then you can use different types of microphones. So here's an example of a lavalier, which is what I'm wearing right now. Now the lavalier that I have on right now has a 20 dB pad on top of it and it also has a pop filter to try to get rid of plosives. So you're looking at basically um, the naked element right now. Um, what you can see as well, and I'll unscrew it and then I'll set it down, is actually the microphone itself is a tiny, tiny little element that's built into that housing, okay? So you can get multiple versions of elements to go with this system, each having a different polar pattern. Ours by default is cardioid, um, but you can purchase one that's omni, purchase one that's hypercardioid, purchase one that's super cardioid, and it's literally as simple as taking off one element and screwing the next element onto, the, onto your actual microphone base. So that's one example of a way to use a belt pack. Um, another example of a way to use a belt pack would be with a headset, okay? So this is a Countryman headset. If you hear the name Countryman, think expensive. Countryman is, makes very, very nice, very small element microphones. Um, DPA is another company that also um, uh, specializes in that, in that kind of thing. But the interesting thing about your headset microphone and what a lot of people don't realize is that this thing is completely bendable. You can bend this earpiece any way that you want and you're not going to break the microphone. The whole point is to actually bend this to the point where it's going to actually fit the ear of the person who's going to wear it well. They make single ear versions like I'm holding right now. Um, they also make dual ear versions that would wrap around the back of your head. So, so very simply, um, you kind of want to bend it so that it's going to fit over the ear pretty well and then you go ahead and size it. 
and I did pretty well on that right out the gate. And what you want to do is you want the element to be as close to the source as possible, but what you don't want the element to do is, if you can see right now, where it's actually touching my face. That's the last thing that you want it to do. Um, you, so you got to kind of bend it out just a little bit and try to keep that element off of the cheek so that there's no cheek noise when the person is actually talking. The other thing to watch out for is if they have a lot of scruff on their face, a lot of facial hair, then you'd wanna move the element even further out away from that so that when they move around, there's no scratchiness as the element moves across um, their facial hair because it's really, really sensitive. These things are great. But headset microphones are great because no matter where the head is gonna go, it stays at that at that position, a little different than a lavalier where depending on where the source is, obviously the distance between me talking and the actual um, element itself is going to change, which then changes level, changes proximity effect, the things that you guys probably know. So um, those are the wireless systems that we have in this class. Moving forward, if you're a show production student, you're gonna get much, much more intricate into the world of wireless, entire classes dedicated to wireless. But for you recording art students, um, this is the only wireless that you're gonna get. So that's why I kind of wanted to give you at least an overview of a simple wireless system, because if you ever do go into the world of working in AV, it's almost a guarantee that that will be one of your responsibilities, is to set up a small wireless system for a person or multiple people, either speaking on stage to an audience or being recorded like a situation like you're watching right now. So thanks a lot for taking a, the time to listen to me talk about wireless, and we will be discussing this much more in lecture at that point.